Greetings and salutations, Ranting Engineer back. Uh, so this will be kind of episode two of a plan for Canada. So I should preface something here as we go in. If you haven't seen this, the video series before this coming into this, I really implore you to watch uh, Michael Moore's new documentary about green energy. It kind of mirrors a lot of what I was saying, and he goes into better in-depth detail how green energy isn't green. Now, I don't hate green energy. What I dislike is the fact that our people are pushing green energy as the be-all, end-all. It's not. It's another shade of brown, okay? Which means we have to use it effectively as best we can to, to basically lower our energy envelope, to lower our CO2 footprint. Now, I'm going to focus a little more on how we can be more self-sufficient, sustaining in Canada. Um, kind of like a response to COVID-19. And if anybody's listening uh, that's a politician here, here's part of a plan to kind of get Canada back on track. So if you watched the previous video of me talking about water, I'm talking about some of the fundamentals, i.e. what we need to survive when it comes to Canada. Uh, we're talking about water. So the one I'm going to do next is heat. And I put heat and shelter in together. Now, when it comes to shelter, buildings are built all over Canada. Uh, there's companies that do this. Most people, except for a certain part of the population, which is homeless, have access to shelter. Uh, back in the old days, you built it. Anyways, but the more key thing is heat. So if you've been paying attention to the news not that long ago, when all these bozos were trying to stop trains, they actually had a problem with the supply of propane in Quebec. Uh, they were running dry. Now, a few years back, I was in Lethbridge when I believe it was, I will say it was the Esso refinery. Uh, the shutdown went two weeks too long, and I was down in Lethbridge with my daughter at a swim meet. And I was racing around Lethbridge trying to find gas because half, half the stations, or more than half the stations, were dry of gasoline. So we do have an infrastructure problem when it comes to certain things. So let's look at heat. So we need to be able to have heat in the wintertime in Canada or we're going to die. So back to, you need to have air. In if you don't have air for three minutes, you're dead. If you don't have water for three days, you're dead. If you don't have food in three weeks, you're dead. I'm going to do food later. I'll probably have to break food into multiple ones because it's a very big subject. Anyways, heat. So there's many ways we can heat our domiciles in Canada, in which we do. Now, the only one we typically don't in Canada, it's more of an American thing, is coal. So I'm not going to talk about coal at all. So a lot of the places rely upon natural gas. Uh, some people use wood. My parents actually use wood pellet stove. Um, there's things like liquid fuels like propane. Uh, Bunker C on the East Coast, as far as I know, is still pre fairly prevalent. Um, there are other ways you can use heat. Electric heat, electric space heaters. You can use um, conductive heat through um, your floor, uh, electric-wise. You can also do it with recirculating water, which usually comes from something that's combusted in a boiler. So when you look at all these ways that we can do heat, you notice I didn't talk about green energy, except I will mention one, and sadly I didn't cover it in my uh, previous series, and that's geothermal energy. Geothermal will keep, a, keep houses um, warm. It's a BERT regional. You've, you've got to have the infrastructure to be able to tap into it, and it keeps you pleasant. It's not too cold. It's not too warm. So geothermal is one potential for that. But in the middle of winter, are you going to trust a solar panel to be effective to give you enough electrical heat to keep you alive. Wind. If you don't have wind in the wind, middle of winter, you're going to freeze to death. Dams are, are more potentially reliable. I've talked about the greenhouse gas envelope um, involved with creating a dam, but when they're in place, okay, we can get electric energy. And then the inline turbines that we've talked about, CSP, which we've shown is not effective in Canada, so we're not going to talk about that. Uh, nuclear, nuclear is off to the side. Okay, we do have nuclear power plants. The point is, in Canada, we don't have a prevailing infrastructure. We've got kind of a fractured one. It's it's mostly there, but it isn't. So what I'm going to talk about is natural gas. Yes, it's a consumable. Okay, it creates CO2. If I want to get an argument, there's places that use natural gas burners to create CO2 to make their their plants grow better in greenhouses. That's a different subject. We'll talk about that later. Um, it's, it's a tough subject because talking about CO2 sinks, we're back to photosynthesis again. I digress. So the backbone, I feel, for Canada should be natural gas. The reason for that, natural gas won't freeze. Okay, It's always in a gas form. You can pipe it around the entire 
Network of Canada, making sure that we have a stable fuel supply for everybody, okay? Yes, certain areas are going to have to use something else. We talked about liquefied natural gas. There was projects years ago about taking liquefied natural gas, uh, running it all the way through Alberta up to the Northwest Territories in the Yukon uh, on the BC side. Anyways, natural gas in is the best way to do um, stable heat potential in a building because, again, it flows. It won't freeze. It's easy, pretty easy to transport around in pipelines. We could tie in everybody in Canada in natural gas because we have the reserves. So we're self-sufficient. We don't have to ship, and whatever we have extra, we can send to the States because we do send a ton of gas across the border that's used by them. Now, the reason I pick on natural gas is with a simple methane molecule, it's got the highest efficiency of burn and conversion to CO2. The downfall is, is methane in its, in its pure form is classified as 30 times worse than CO2. So there's a plus minus. If it, if it gets out, it leaks out. It's not good for the environment. Okay. When you look at wood, wood is another way that you can burn and provide heat. The thing is, it's incomplete combustion. So you get soot and you get carbon monoxide and you get some other, other well, GHGs with it. Okay. Could you burn propane? Yes, you can. In fact, instead of railing propane all over the place, we should put some pipelines in, uh, so that'll put people to work installing pipelines and maintaining it, to make sure that the existing infrastructure set up in propane has a propane supply. Eventually, you'd probably want to turn it to see, uh, into natural gas, okay? So overall, it is the most efficient combustion that you can have when it comes to a consumable to heat a, to, to heat a um, we'll say, a space. Now, the next side of this is, and a shout out to Tansy and, and, and Tommy, who've been uh, following a little bit of stuff on Facebook. Um, they were talking about how as consumers can we get better with use of energy and resources. Well, one of the things you've got to pay attention to is insulation in your house, okay, or wind breaks. Uh, I remember out in a farm, guys were planting trees to, to, to stop the wind. Basically, if you can stop the wind, you stop the convective, conductive energy loss from a household. But... If you make sure you have really good insulation inside your house, that helps retain the heat. It also helps retain the cool, which means you lower the amount of, say, natural gas or heating fuel, everything that you want to use to keep you warm so you don't die in the middle of winter. Okay, so you could do an entire infrastructure for Canada. I'm saying the backbone should be natural gas because it's kind of the least bad is the best way to describe it and you can supplement it with other energies at a local level so i'm not saying that 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 solar power shouldn't be used but it needs to be used effectively there might be remote areas that yeah are really sunny even in the winter time like medicine hat okay we can get some of that solar energy use turn it into some type of electrical energy use it as in-floor heating in a bathroom or something like that you could use wind okay Again, there's all these pallets, but I think moving forward, natural gas, an entire network hooking up as much of Canada, it's our resource, okay? I go back to, yes, it's a consumable, but when you look at the all the green technology, we're consuming something, okay? Sunlight through the through the panels, which I've talked about before, well, the casing and the silicon, anyways, I've, I've covered this in the previous series. For now... So the next phase of breaking Canada self-sufficient is let's use, to the best of our ability, natural gas across Canada where it makes sense with propane in certain areas because it's already set up, displacing things like bunker C fuel. The reason for that is bunker C is kind of like, it's not a perfect analogy, but it's like diesel. Okay, diesel, somebody steps on the gas pedal on the diesel engine, you see all that black smoke. It's because that's incomplete combustion. So back to natural gas. Natural gas has very high um, conversion efficiency. It basically is a carbon molecule that goes right to CO2 with minimal about carbon monoxide. Okay, It's quite efficient when it comes to transfer. Um, we could get better at that. We tend to use hot air to um, heat our houses. I think the efficiency of in-floor heating is higher However, it's a different type of heating. It's, it's conductive that comes up through the body. So we as humans, we get cold by, by wind and slowly get warmed 
through our bodies, through our, our, our feet. Anyway, so first thing is fix the water. Second thing is let's get natural, natural gas to everybody um, so they have a, a very reliable uh, system for heating in Canada. Again, it's when you look at everything out there as a backbone, it's probably the least CO2 impact. Uh, when you look at the amount of energy to move it, it's probably it's probably less than propane. Propane you got to do in a liquid form, so either you got to take it out by tankers on rail, or even the pipeline. There's more drag efficiency. There's more uh, delta P per hundred meters in a propane pipeline, because propane is usually compressed and shipped as a liquid. All right, so that should paying attention, making us self-sufficient using our own resource internally as best we can. Now, as a side rant, because we need heat to survive in Canada, do you think putting a carbon tax on natural gas and bunker C and anything makes any sense? No, we are taxing something that we need for survival. And I think it's underhanded by the government to put that in there. It's not a luxury. We have to have it. We're being taxed on that? Mm, no, I don't agree with it. All right, uh, we'll load this up. Hope you have a good evening. We'll talk soon. Bye.